welcome to another video and today I'm going to review the original 1989 Batman starring Michael Keane and Jack Nicholson. So the plot is the Dark Knight of Gotham, Gotham City begins his war of crime with his first major enemy began Jack Napier, a criminal who becomes the Joker. This movie is so much better than I remember. When I saw it for the first time, like a few years ago now, I don't really know when it was, but I didn't like this movie. I thought it was one of the most boring Batman movies ever made. Which is sad to say that because I love Batman. Um, but watching it th this t this go around, this this movie was great. Tim Burns' vision in this movie is great. But I will not lie, and I and this is even though that these are these four are some of my favorite Batman movies of all time. Yes, even Batman Robin. I won't lie that they are a little long. It's not the Batman long, but it, it but they are long, right? So because it's weird, because like I was entertained for most of this movie. It's just that I was curious of how long I had to go. Yeah, this movie is so much better than I thought. But I will talk about Batman Returns in the next video, but the characters in this movie are so much better than I remember. Michael Keane's portrayal of Batman is one of the best versions of Batman that we have ever gotten of the Dark Knight himself. And I am super excited for The Flash, for The Flash movie, which has just been delayed. It was my most Batman movie of the year, but it got delayed until next year. So bloody mad. But that's the thing, because I can't wait to um, review Batman Returns, because as I'm recording this, I've seen Batman 89, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman Robin. I started, uh, I started in 1966, um, but I've watched uh, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker and Batman vs. Dracula. I'm about to watch Batman vs. Change Me Into and the Lego Batman movie DC Superheroes Unite, the uh, one based on the video game. But yeah, I'm super excited to review Batman Returns in the next video. His version of Batman, I can't wait to see his version in the DCEU because like I haven't seen any Ben Affleck stuff. The closest I've seen of Ben Affleck as Batman is in Saucer Squad, and I love the original Saucer Squad, I don't care what you guys say. We did get some late images of him in the Batman costume, and he looked awesome. I, like, I do kind of prefer, like, more of the kind of, um, like, the Ben Affleck, Christian Bale type look, where you can move more in the suit. I think bring back Michael Keaton, because I don't want him to portray the different character. A different version of Bruce Wayne Batman. I want to portray the same. So if you're going to do that, it's a great idea to bring back that old suit and that classic bubble build, which we've got teasing the teaser draft for the Flash. I can't wait for it. And I don't mind Vicky Vale in this movie this go around. I wasn't the biggest Vicky Vale person when I watched this movie for the first time, but I didn't mind her this go around. But I think she is one of the better. Uh, Batman love interest that we've seen in a film, right? And which we'll talk about Catwoman in Returns and uh, Doctor Chase Meridian in um, Batman Forever, and we'll definitely talk about the one in Batman Robin because that's like fucking bizarre. Anyway, the villain Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Oh my god, I cannot believe. How wrong I was when I thought that he was one of the worst Jokers in the Batman movies. Because I am a huge fan of Heath Ledger's version and I am a supporter of Jared Leto's version that he portrayed in Suicide Squad. But Jack Nicholson might be my second favourite right behind Heath Ledger. Which is surprising because I was not a big fan of this movie when I first saw it. Because like... The way that I watched these four movies was kind of backwards, kind of backwards and forwards. I started with the first Burden film I saw was Returns. The first Joel Schumacher film I saw was Batman Robin. And then I went back to Batman Forever. And then I went to 89. And 
Yeah, like these four Batman movies are some of my favourites. Like they might, and I realised this uh, recently when I was ranking them and stuff, they might rank differently. Um, like one might be right down the bottom or stuff like that, but the series as a whole is one of my favourite Batman series. Because I've only seen about like maybe like 10 minutes of The Dark Knight Rises. And I haven't seen Batman Begins at all. So I'm curious to watch the Dark Knight trilogy. Because I love the Dark Knight. It's my favourite Batman movie. I am curious to see how the rest of the knowledge trilogy keeps up that uh, that greatness that is the Dark Knight. And the score. I love Danny Elfman's music for this film. He takes the top two spots of some of my favourite superhero music. But both of my favorite superheroes, one Marvel, one DC, both Batman and Spider-Man. The original, like, the original score is two, the original score is two of my favorite superhero scores of all time. And, like, I know they did, like, other things. He's done, like, the second Avengers movie and stuff, but those are not up to par as... He is with, like, Batman, Batman Returns, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. They are just great, great scores. Now, rating, I am, I'm not going to do my old movie ranking. If you guys want to know what my old movie ranking is with the different characters and stuff, um, go and watch some of my old reviews and stuff. But I will give this movie an A. It's so much better than I remember. One of my favorite Batman films of all time. I'm so excited to watch to, to review the rest of the Tim Burton slash Joel Schumacher era films. So guys, please hit the like button down below if you haven't already. Hit subscribe. Also hit the little bell icon to get notified future videos I make. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon.